Salutations, hey friends. My name is Owen Kirby, and today I'm going to show you how to build a MIDI sequencer component in Touch Designer. We already have our basic MIDI sequencer going here into my super synth and into the audio out. And um, all right, so let's get started. So the first thing you want to do, something like this, is to drop the bass. Well, the first thing you might want to do is possibly lower the level of the synthesizer. Okay, so let's create a bass. And this is just something, just just the way I like to work. I like to figure out directly what I'm doing and then go for it immediately from a base and a compartment level. So drop the base, we call it sequencer. Of course this one's going to be sequencer 1. We're going to go in there, add an input for our master ramp. Call this uh, timing ramp. And the beat ramp is a good chop to use to um, create you know, timing ramps for various sequencers and audio applications and timing stuff in general because it has a second input that allows you to sync various ramps. So if I wanted, I could go in here, uh, set up another beat ramp, have them play in sync, but then also subdivide um, the ramp so then get different rhythm patterns per sequencer. Okay, so now we've got our timing ramp. That's a good start. But we want some parameters in here, so let's start by customizing the components, creating a page called a Sequencer, which is going to be our main page, and um, let's make this one an eight-step sequencer using integer values. Okay, so step one, and by default this is going to be 60, and the range minimum is going to be zero, range maximum is going to be 127. Copy, paste, paste, paste. Okay, then bam, here are our steps. And let's uh, let's just plug in some values so we have something to work with once we get in here. Okay, so 60, 72, 67, 73, 72, 67, 60. Okay, so there's a bunch of different ways to build sequencers. Um, this is my preferred way. I like to I like to create sort of arrays on the um, of values on the component level using the custom parameters and then recalling them using the parameter chop. So here we have the parameter chop with all the different steps and the various values. And what we want to do is iterate through these steps and then recall the value. Um, but there's a little bit of a trick that I'm going to show you as we get there. So first, let's step through the steps and get the value. So we're going to use a pulse chop here to generate eight pulses, which are here. We'll use a lookup, similar to the drum machine tutorial I did. So we're going to have a lookup in here, get those pulses going, bam, bam, boom. Count chop. And we're going to count until 7 because we start at 0. And then once we hit 7, we want it to go back to the first step, which is step 0. So we're going to loop min max 0 to 7. We're going to reset so we get nice integers here. And then we're going to get a constant chop where we're going to store our values here using an expression. So here's where I get to the part uh, that's a bit particular and you got to know it. If you want to work with MIDI in Touch Center, it's that you can't send the MIDI note number as a chop value. MIDI note number is in the name itself, as you can see here, along with the channel information, the note number, and then a 0 to 1 value. That's sort of the note velocity, essentially. So instead of typing into the value 0, we're going to go straight into name 0 and try to create a string. So the string goes as follows, channel 1, and it's a note, so n, ch1n plus, that's string, 
uh, the string is ultimately going to be an integer. I just know this. Operator. Oh, par one. We might want to put a null in there. Because it's a better practice of null one. Operator, null one. Channel. Another integer. And this is count one. Count one. of our string and our integer. Okay, cool. So that's a start. Um, now what I like to do is to, you know, this is a real quick sequencer over here, but we can add these values together. My chops, add. My mistake. It's getting a bit late, guys. But, uh, here we go. And uh, there's one last step to do here. So if you send this information directly to a MIDI synthesizer, either like uh, either outboard or built-in touch, you're probably going to get hung notes. And the reason for this is that it keeps switching notes and maybe it doesn't have time. It, it keeps changing channel numbers and maybe doesn't have time to reach zero to get it, that note off. So you might get hung notes. So the way I go about um, fixing that by creating a math chop and then also creating a pattern chop which holds all the single MIDI channels. So the length of one, F to zero, channel, and it's going to use the same nomenclature, CH1N0 to 127, and bam, combine chops, add them, and we're going to add them and match them by channel name. Here we go. It's starting to look like some MIDI. So let's plug this in. Oh, didn't like that, but. sequencer in touch um, what else can I show you all right and then a couple of cool features let's see where can we find some features here's a feature ascending descending and uh, what else over here oh yeah okay the reason I had this null Sir, built in touch really quickly. This will work with external gear. Um, you know, you can use the same ideas to sequence CC numbers, etc. Um, just have fun and go wild.